Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing great out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day. A great ending to your week and beginning to your weekend out there, whenever it may be that you're tuning in. I got you some update information on the tropics. That'll be the first thing we'll talk about, and that'll take up most of the video as uh, we are still watching an area of interest out here in the Western Caribbean. And we're starting to get a little energy firing off this morning from this area that we are watching. Now, this energy that's firing off this morning I don't think that this is going to consolidate into anything anytime soon, meaning over the next few days, really over the weekend. I really think it's going to take into early next week before something really starts to come together. But what we're going to do here, because there is a lot of chatter on this, uh, you know, about a hurricane potentially forming in the Gulf of Mexico, is talk about this. We'll talk about what's going on right now. The latest from the National Hurricane Center. We'll go over all the model guides that we have from overnight into this morning. Uh, we'll talk about steering currents. We'll nerd out with you for a little bit. And uh, yeah, get you guys covered. Talk about the environment that does support a strengthening storm system once this uh, moves north into the Gulf of Mexico. So yes, the Gulf Coast definitely needs to be on alert. Uh, not, you know freaking out or anything like that or even overly concerned just aware of uh, this system because we know that a lot of times we can get some wild stuff that comes from the caribbean and the gulf of mexico so we'll talk about what's going to happen weather wise across the entire little 48 for your friday also and get you covered there so if you guys have not subscribed certainly consider doing that like the video if you like it if anybody has anything that i can pray about or pray over please put it in the comments below let's get rocking and rolling this morning we got this working so we're good to go there so this is the area we are watching right here in what we call the Western Caribbean. We already have some convection shower and storm activity ongoing right now uh, just off uh, the Atlantic side of Central America here. And, you know, you see these colors in green, yellow, red, even black. This indicates higher cloud tops, colder cloud tops which tells us we do have some intense convection. This is all generated off what we call a CAG, C-A-G, stands for Central American Gyrum, which is basically this huge, broad area of low pressure that can spin quite literally just like this cyclonically over Central America. And sometimes you'll get some energy that you know fans off uh, to this side. Sometimes it goes over to the Pacific side, and sometimes this energy can get going over here. It can get going even over here and in the eastern pacific and we are watching specifically the atlantic side the western caribbean right into here over the next um several days so that's what's going on this is the area to watch yes there's a couple areas to watch out in the main development region the mdr but uh this is our primary primarily focus right into this area right here so let's continue to move forward look at the latest from the national hurricane center see if we got another update they have kept us at a 40 percent chance overnight and, and rightfully so um because there's a chance that this potentially does not actually develop into a depression, low level circulation or a named storm until maybe this time next week. I mean, we're going to be talking about this for a while unless it just totally fizzles out on all model guidance, which it could or it could go boom. You know, I think that there's a chance for both and certainly right down the middle of both of those uh, more conservative solutions and more aggressive solutions. So right now we have a 40 percent chance in this orange area for a tropical depression or a tropical storm to form. Now, this will most likely take the H name, Helene. Remember, the system off the coast of the Carolinas did not take a name. It stated a potential tropical cyclone. Uh, the next name after Helene is Isaac. So I would watch both of those names for this down here because something out here in the main development region could get going, could take a name real quick. It happens a lot. So let's not focus too much on the names of these systems. So National Hurricane Center, 40% chance to develop of development in this area within the next seven days so the latest gfs we're all the way down to about nine to ten days out so we got the entire length of the run here so we'll start this off for sunday morning not a whole lot going on no real energy that's put together we take it to monday morning same thing tuesday morning not a whole lot here uh wednesday morning i mean we're starting to get a little bit more energy you know, some of these models are starting to want to spend some energy off on the eastern Pacific side, on the Pacific side now. That's something to watch. Um, but we got this huge broad spin here that's, you know, quite literally doing this right over Central America, hence the name CAG, Central American Gyrum. Where does the energy form? I mean, we have to watch this. And, you know, we start to get into next Thursday morning, so we're six days out, has a 996 millibar tropical storm north of the Yucatan at this point. And then we start to get into next Friday morning, so a week from today, right? Uh, 
988 millibar strong tropical storm category one hurricane we keep this going this intensifies into a category two hurricane as it begins to cruise north across the gulf of mexico and heads towards the gulf coastline and then we take this all the way out to about next sunday morning not this sunday morning the last sunday of september has a uh really close to a major hurricane making landfall while well, starting to move into the gulf coastline um what is this this uh, nine days from now so next sunday morning 963 millibar low strengthening hurricane making a landfall in the gulf coastline so that's a concern but one thing i want you guys to note is if we look at the run prior to this um where's the tropical system well, it's already made landfall and it's already cruising up the eastern seaboard. That's where it is. So it's not even showing up on your screen. What about the run prior to this? Same thing. It's gone. The run prior to that, had a tropical system moving over Florida and then getting off the coast of the southeast. So some wild changes in model guidance. It continues. We continue to have the flip-flopping of it. And I think we will continue to see, to see that until we actually get a defined a low-level circulation uh, energy that actually gets going in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the European, well, same thing. We'll start it off for this Sunday. Take it into Monday. Not a whole lot going on. Take it into Tuesday. Still, uh, just nothing really come together yet, which we're starting to expect here. We're getting a lot of green here in the Western Caribbean. We take it into Wednesday morning. Just energy over you know the bay of campeche the gulf of, um the gulf of mexico and the caribbean and then we start to get into thursday and it seems like models really like next thursday as kind of the pivotal day of when something tries to get going but i'm sure that'll change um but we're starting to get some energy starting to come together in the bay of campeche we get into uh, next friday low pressure pops off in the boc bay of campeche and then we get into next Saturday. So at this point, we're, what, eight days from now. And then we get into Sunday. And let's just take it all the way through the length of the run. This is all the way till next Sunday evening. Just has a very weak tropical low right off the northwest coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula. It's it's so, so different. Uh, the euro continues to be further west and very weak. Okay, what about the Canadian from overnight? Canadian kind of follows the euro. It has this ticking west develop some sort of energy right here in the Caribbean, plows it right into the Yucatan, moves it over the Yucatan, gets it over the Bay of Campeche, and does strengthen into a tropical storm in the Bay of Campeche, south, southern areas of the Gulf of Mexico. And it does try to intensify, but it's all strung out and eventually just kind of does something very weird and looks like just a strung out mess and then makes landfall sometime next weekend. It's just a weak tropical storm. So... The icon, what does this show? Well, it is ticked a little bit further west also. Has this big area of energy, not very strong though. Just a thousand and six millibar low next Tuesday. Kind of moves us into the Yucatan, brings some unsettled weather. We get into Wednesday and then we get into Thursday. This starts to kind of get its act together and it kind of starts to show something like the Canadian. This strung out mess that just looks very odd. All right, so that's all the model guides. And I, you know, one thing I did not show you guys is the Euro AI model. See if we have a run of that, and we do. And let's um, let's back this up a little bit. The Euro AI model looks like it has. It looks like this actually ticked east and has a, about a Category One hurricane making landfall in the, in the Panhandle of Florida. So I did forget to pull that one up. So I did want to show you guys that on the fly. So yeah, um weird weird changes overnight hard to call it a change unless we get some sort of changes in the ensemble guidance but you know the gefs ensemble guidance from overnight remember all these little numbers are just members off this 21 run mean if you will but it throws all the members on your screen but really just keep your eyes focused on the blob of yellow and orange here this is where the majority of the members are but if you notice some of the members do split off and then eventually about six days from now i mean you start to get members way over here deep in the gulf of mexico you get a lot of members heading right towards florida you got some members kind of going right down the middle and we still got some members still chilling down here in the western caribbean so there's a pretty big split here you see how everything kind of splits once it gets into the gulf of mexico some some members really bog down slow down really deep in this into a major hurricane 947 966 954 some members are very strong some members go take this right into florida about a week from today as a very strong hurricane. We got some member, we got one member that like deepens this kind of south of Cuba. So there's a huge spread, huge spread, kind of together right here, but look how everything just kind of spreads out right here. 
Okay, and then the European Ensemble here, same thing. They're all kind of jammed up down here, but most of the members are further west. But we still get a couple members, a few members, that uh, get into more of this, uh, you know, easternly scenario right here. But a lot of the members, I would say more of them, do go over the Bay of Campeche or go towards the Bay of Campeche right here. That's an ugly arrow right into here. Okay, so not a whole lot's changed um, from overnight. I mean, we're still got a huge split. And you can see how a lot of these members just really stall out down here in, in the southern Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche here. And we do got those members right here cruising across the Gulf of Mexico at a, at a faster clip. And then we just got some that are just getting trapped over here. So weird steering currents are, are making these weird splits on all, all model guides. It's just very odd steering currents and this continues to be the case. And you know, if we're looking at an environment that does support strengthening, okay once we get into about early to midway next week uh it's trying to show a low pressure in the western caribbean here and i want you to know guys this is the upper wind pattern okay so these are winds 35 40 000 feet up in the air so in the northern hemisphere low pressure spins like this cyclonically so i'm going to just draw some arrows around this so it's spinning like this in the lower levels but in this case on top of the storm the winds are actually kind of flowing the opposite direction and dispersing outward we call this divergence aloft here and uh, winds are just getting pushed outward now there is a little bit of a flow against this but it's very light right here so what i'm trying to say is is the upper wind pattern supports rising air so rising air uh, allows for uh, continuous firing of shower and storm activity sustaining of convection convection shower and storm activity allows for a moist environment and these tropical systems love a moist environment so we get rising air that gets dispersed outward in the upper levels of the atmosphere because of the uh, air getting pushed away from the storm and it's like a continuous process that supports the maintaining or strengthening of these tropical systems so the upper wind pattern is supportive so we keep this going here that upper wind pattern remains supportive i mean we get here into the gulf of mexico and this is just the latest gfs for example and it gets kind of weird here for example we start to get some stout I would say like southwest shear right here that's hitting the northwest portion of the storm or westernly shear you might as well call it flow aloft kind of jetting across this region right here this could affect the northern side of the storm but there's it's just a bunch of what ifs at this point we still got one heck of an outflow channel going like this over a good chunk of this storm and some outflow right here we got some divergence right into here some some weird stuff goes on once you get into the gulf of mexico there's been some chatter about dry air affecting the storm and it very well could uh, that chatter is definitely warranted just like the potential for a major hurricane is warranted uh, but i really think that a lot of the moisture gets slung across florida regardless because of this outflow right here so uh, we might get a drier side of the system right here because of this shear on the western side. We'll have to watch. All, you know, all the scenarios are on the table here. And as far as steering currents, guys, I mean, low pressure is in the blue, high pressure in this salmon kind of orange color right here. So flow around, you know, low pressure is going to go like this. Okay, flow around this high pressure is going to go like this in this case. And we're starting this off for, when is this? This is, um, this is Tuesday. Okay. Uh, our low pressure our area of lower pressure is somewhere down here and it's it's not strong enough to really be shown up on your screen but it would be somewhere into here okay if you notice there's a lot of white around this system especially on the northern side bottom side this is not going to go south this will be gaining a little bit of strength here so stronger systems want to gain latitude want to go further north so there's this weakness right into here okay uh, meaning there's just weak flow aloft. There's not really anything out there in the upper levels of the atmosphere steering this, I would say, aggressively one way or the other. Okay, so you keep this going. Pops off this lower pressure right here. I want you to note there's some sort of trough starting to dig down here now into the southern U.S. And this is just one solution, the GFS, okay? And I'm not going to go over all the steering currents for all the model guidance. This is more so just as an educational purpose for you guys as the audience. But we got the lower pressure right here. This was this is our tropical system we are watching, okay? And then we get right here. At this point, this is starting to strengthen, okay? This could be, be getting steered by this ridging right in here, kind of diving down over the southeastern areas of Florida. This could be kind of yanking this a little bit that way. It could be but it's still far enough away to where it might not be affecting it. 
and we got the flow around this trough of low pressure right up here in the blue and then this actual blue right here is the low pressure itself which is our potential future tropical system in the southern gulf of mexico so is this close enough to this to be steered kind of this way well watch what happens here get this back in motion it it, it kind of is it kind of isn't so this is some pretty weak influence of ridging up here i think honestly what is steering this on the gfs right towards the bayou and mississippi and alabama in this case is just really just the fact that this is a system that gets stronger in the gulf of mexico there's not much flow one way or the other okay so a stronger system wants to just head north so it has an easy path north because there's not really anything close enough up here really staring at this way staring at that way it, it, there really isn't i mean yeah we got to flow around this ridge going like this but it's it's kind of far away from the system in this case and this trough is way too far so it just kind of has an easy route to just go north because it's just a a tropical system gaining strength and a stronger system wants to gain latitude so that's exactly what it does and in fact what happens here is it gets close enough to this ridge right up here to where it really starts to kind of bog down. So the system actually right here begins to slow down because it gets confused. It's like, you know, are you trying to force me to go the other way? What, what are you doing here? And eventually it just kind of drifts over the southern U.S. So I hope that makes sense. Um, this is a tricky one to watch. I mean, I, I would just definitely be aware if you're along the Gulf Coast. Line. We'll continue to get you updates on that, guys. Let's talk about weather back home over the low of 48. We do have uh, moisture over the Great Lakes region, but folks, that's about it. I mean, we got some light rain across areas of southern New England. We got some scattered downpours across the southeast, but yeah, outside of that, uh, pretty quiet weather out there. Watches, warnings, and advisories. Heat advisories in Oklahoma areas of Arkansas, unfortunately. As summer just continues to drag on, red flag warnings across the high plains, and uh, yeah, some flood watches across California. Uh, excessive rainfall outlook, there's a marginal risk uh, in a couple areas, but as far as anything higher risk of excessive rainfall, there's nothing out there, nothing overly concerning whatsoever. The Storm Prediction Center will watch for a couple marginal risk areas, level one out of five, one in the plains, one across the Midwest, Ohio Valley, well, just Midwest. So there could be some storms that could pack a punch in these areas. Gusty winds, small hill is the threat here. The southeast, um, some downpours, some storms are possible in the peninsula of Florida. We could get some scattered downpours across the Carolinas. Man, outside of that, it's it's just a warm Friday in September. I mean, it really is. So not, not, not a whole lot going on. No widespread rain. Folks, you know, some people have been mentioning, hey, Mitch, you know, why don't you talk about the pattern across the U.S.? Well, the pattern's very weird across the U.S. right now. There's no solid ridge in place, uh, strong ridge, there's no solid troughing in place, just little areas of energy out there that's just kind of making, and I think this is ultimately what's making the models kind of be thrown for a loop for the steering of the tro potential tropical system down the Caribbean. But the Northeast, we're getting some moisture getting thrown back into extreme southeastern new england uh throughout the day today so it'll be just a dreary kind of light rain day some of this rain could eventually get all the way to the main coastline new hampshire coastline uh this evening so just kind of a dreary kind of fall like day as some low pressure is just kind of trapped off the coast of the northeast this will continue just to bring rain over the next 24 hours it won't add up to a ton but uh, definitely just consistent on and off light to moderate rain all day. Everybody else in the Northeast seems fine. The South Central U.S., this is where we could get some storms that kind of are rounding around this ridge. Some showers are possible in eastern New Mexico, southwest Texas, Panhandle of Oklahoma, and Texas. And then some storms are possible in southern Kansas. Some of these could reach severe limits. Maybe tonight could get some storms around uh, Kansas City. Um, some storms could make their way through central Missouri throughout the overnight hours. And we could wake up to some unsettled weather across Missouri and Kansas and surrounding states. So, uh, the north central U.S., we're dealing with some showers this morning across the Great Lakes region. We'll potentially get some storms in lower Michigan. We'll get some storms possible to likely in northern Indiana today. And eventually this will drift south all throughout Indiana, maybe even extreme eastern Illinois throughout the evening hours. Um, the rest of the Midwest, upper Midwest seems pretty fine. Uh, just 
you know, watch out for some showers, maybe some storms in Nebraska, a little bit of energy this morning. Well, tomorrow morning across the upper Midwest. So the Western U.S. is pretty quiet too, guys. Um, we could get some storms, some rain down here in Southern California uh, this, this afternoon, this evening, maybe even some downpours across Southern Nevada. And these could, you know, introduce their, themselves in the Southwest Utah, Northwest uh, Arizona. Uh, some storms are possible in Northern Montana, but folks pr pretty quiet stuff a little cut off low that will bring some moisture across you know areas of the southwest so temperatures warm just about everywhere the only reason you're staying cooler in the new england area is because of just the cloud cover and rain once you get away from that i mean a little bit cooler in the upper midwest today but still warm i mean it's getting well into the 90s across kind of the the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, the Deep South, getting into the 100s in areas of Texas and Oklahoma, maybe even southern Kansas. And it's even warming up out west, too. Folks, I mean, it's pretty warm everywhere. There's not overly cold air anywhere. Um, if anywhere, uh, if anything, on average, the country is above average temperature-wise. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. And we should have a video this evening if nothing comes up. God bless.